Hey guys, Dr. Gooden here with the last video in this sequence of structural kinesiology videos. I can't believe that we made it this far. Props to you for following along. Props to me a little bit, not really, mostly to you guys for your patience as these videos have come out and for your perseverance to learn online through this crazy time. If you're watching this video and we're currently not quarantined and there's no pandemic going on, count yourself lucky and blessed because these videos were made while students were away and while I was here cooped up in this room and we're forced to learn about structural kinesiology as best as we can without other bodies and classmates and peers and professors all in the same room to learn together and to palpate each other and to figure out together how these structures work. And so doing it over the internet and through these videos and on YouTube, you know, we've made it work. So I'm super grateful for that. Okay. All of that's out of the way. In this video, we are going to talk about the muscles of the ankle and the foot joints. Let's learn about our bodies. Okay, so the muscles of the ankle and the foot that we will cover in this course are primarily those that cross the ankle joint. We're not going to talk about the intrinsic muscles of the foot. If you go on to be a podiatrist or perhaps a physical therapist or a gait specialist where you deal with the foot, you'll learn these muscles at a different point. In this course though, we're gonna function primarily on those ankle and lower leg muscles. So we can group these muscles according to their location and function. So those that cross the ankle anteriorly, they're primarily going to be dorsiflexors or dorsal flexors. Posteriorly, we will primarily have plantar flexors. Laterally, we have everters and medially, we have inverters. Okay, so depending on what compartment and what aspect of the leg these muscles cross, they will have a specific action or set of actions. And I say primarily because sometimes there's a little bit of overlap and sometimes a muscle that's right next to another muscle and you think, oh, those are on the same aspect. They may have the same primary action, but perhaps a different secondary action depending on where their tendons run. So let's first look at the gastrocnemius. So this is going to be the larger of your two calf muscles, and it's easy to distinguish because of the long Achilles tendon that it shares with the soleus. And you can see that this gastrocnemius has two heads. It has a lateral head and a medial head. Now, some people's calves are long and very full, and the musculature goes all the way down low on their Achilles tendon and other people have kind of high and bunchy calves way up here with very long Achilles tendon. And those types of people tend to be sprinters or at least better suited to sprinting because they have all of that elastic storage capacity of a long and thick Achilles tendon. Now this muscle does flexion of the knee because it crosses the knee right here, see? and it's originating off of the posterior aspect of those femoral condyles. And we talked in the previous videos about the knee, how the gastrocnemius te technically is a knee flexor, but it's primarily a plantar flexor. Now the soleus muscle is deep to that, and you can see it arising off of the fibula up here and then also off of the tibia. And it is more type one fiber dominant than the gastrocnemius. The gastrocnemius tends to be more fast twitch in its fiber composition, while the soleus is more slow twitch. And unsurprisingly, if you were to go sprint, you probably would feel sore in your gastrocnemius the next day, whereas a lot of walking will make you sore in your soleus. And its only action is plantar flexion. Now we're going to talk about muscles on the lateral aspect of your lower leg. And the first of them is the peroneus longus. Sometimes they're also called fibularis just because they come off of the fibula. So the peroneus longus, it does eversion of the foot, which is easy to see because it's on that lateral aspect. And notice how the tendon runs behind the lateral malleolus. It uses it as a pulley, but it also does plantar flexion of the ankle, and that's because of its anchor point on the under surface of the foot, down here on the medial cuneiform and the first metatarsal. So when it contracts, it will ever, but also pull you into plantar flexion. Peroneus brevis is exactly the same as far as actions go. 
It's just a shorter muscle, hence the name brevis. It's also using the lateral malleolus as a pulley, but now it's inserting on the base of the fifth metatarsal, what we talked about earlier, as being a very common fracture site. And the final peroneus or fibularis mus muscle is peroneus tertius, and it's the smallest of the three, and it also does eversion, but see how it, the tendon comes down on this sort of anterior aspect, right above the pinky toe, the fifth toe, and so it causes dorsiflexion instead of plantar flexion. Next we have extensor digitorum longus, and you can tell by its name that it will extend the digits. And this extensor digitorum not only does extension of the four lesser toes, but it also, because it crosses in, on the anterior aspect of the ankle, it does dorsiflexion of the ankle. And if it pulls the toes on this left side, or sorry, this um, lateral aspect of the foot up into, into extension, you can also leverage this muscle to pull you into eversion. So it pulls the dorsal surface medially while the under surface rotates into eversion. So the extensor digitorum longus, extension of the toes and ankle, but also eversion of the foot. Now extensor hallucis longus, hallucis is similar to pollicis for thumb, but in this case it's for big toe. So this extends the big toe or the great toe as well as does dorsiflexion, but also weak inversion because now it's going to pull this medial part of the foot up and outward, which will rotate the underside inward into weak inversion. Next we have the tibialis anterior muscle, and this is going to be the muscle that you feel just lateral to your shin bone or to your tibia. And because it's on this anterior aspect, it does dorsiflexion and also inversion of the foot because of its insertion on the medial aspect of the medial cuneiform. Tibialis posterior is arising in between the fibula and the tibia, and it does plantar flexion because it it's on the posterior side, and also inversion of the foot. And you can see how this posterior tibialis has all of these insertion points on the inferior surfaces of the navicular, cuneiform, cuboid bones, bases of your metatarsals, and because of all those insertion points, and because it wraps around that medial side of your foot, the posterior tibialis is, is very crucial for maintaining a nice rigid arch. Not overly rigid, but a nice and decently high arch. If you have a weak tibialis posterior, or perhaps one that has been lengthened, those tendons have been lengthened due to repeated and chronic stress, uh, your arches might start to drop or to dip, or in some cases, you're genetically predisposed to it. So for instance, I have very low arches and walk with somewhat of a flat foot, and my running career was unfortunately cut short because in college I started to develop uh, tendonitis and then eventually a tendinosis of the posterior tibialis. And no amount of strength training or rehab or gait retraining fixed it. I had tried all of those things. I went from a heel striker to a midfoot striker as far as my running mechanics went. And unfortunately, none of that helped to the extent that I could really salvage my running career. So, you know, it kind of fizzled out, but I learned a lot along the way. And that's actually what launched me into my love for understanding training and kinesiology and strength and conditioning. I mean, I always loved running, but once I realized, man, how am I going to overcome these injuries? It opened my eyes to strength training and what that could do, to the importance of core training, to the importance of understanding biomechanics and how stride mechanics can affect these injuries and perhaps prevent them or even improve your performance. And so it really launched me into my whole pursuit of optimal human performance, which led me to get a master's degree and then eventually a PhD and then decide that, hey, I wanna teach this. So I will forever have kind of a love-hate relationship with the posterior tibialis. And that's because it ended my running career and also because it launched my teaching career. Next, we have the flexor digitorum longus and it does exactly what its name says. It flexes the digits. It also does inversion of the foot because it crosses the medial aspect and plantar flexion of the ankle because it's on the posterior aspect. 
and finally the flexor hallucis longus so this is on the posterior medial aspect so it's going to flex the great toe and invert the foot as well as cause plantar flexion of the ankle okay you guys that was the last muscle that you need to know for this course we've learned a lot about muscle actions about bony landmarks and how to palpate muscles and bony landmarks and how the joints move because of the muscles that act upon them and in what sequence they're moving. But it's important to remember that this is still just an overview. We could go so much more in depth about each of these joints or each of these muscle groups. So let this be your guide and your foundation to understanding more in depth the human body in each of your other classes as you take them. So for now, this is the last video for this course and will be the last video in this playlist for some time. However, I'm sure that down the road, I'll make more videos for structural kinesiology, probably about specific joints, specific muscles, going in depth on maybe how to train or strengthen or stretch or rehab certain parts of the body or certain muscles or muscle groups. But for now, if you wanna check out any of the other joint by joint, region by region videos, you can see them over here in a playlist to my left. If and when I make more videos for this course, the next one will be here on my right. You can also check out other courses on my channel having to do with biomechanics, strength and conditioning, sports science. Thank you guys so much for being on this journey with me and I will see you in the next video.